Hey all, so it seems like people really enjoy the video I made talking about like censorship on television. And so I took that as a sign that people want to hear more about this kind of stuff. So I thought this time we'd have a look at video games because nobody else on YouTube has ever talked about video game censorship before. With TV shows at least, I sort of like understand how you would go about making changes to those. But like with games, you'd have to actually go back into it and make changes after the fact to just for specific regions, which just... Ah, uh, does not sound like it would be a fun time at all. I do want to make a clear distinction between localization and censorship in this video because I think oftentimes they do get a bit confused. So I want to focus less on things that were changed in different countries to make it more accessible and more just things that were altered for the purpose of, you know, protecting the children. Again though, unfortunately I do have to do that thing where in a video about censorship I can't actually show you everything uncensored. So please feel free to go and check out the completely depixelated version over on my Patreon if that's something that interests you. Uh, and go check out all those glorious computer-generated genitals. Uh, so again, sorry about that. I wish it didn't have to be that way, but you know. And again here, like with the anti-piracy and uh, what was the other one I did? The fucking... Uh... Anyway, all of the game videos that I do, I don't actually play a lot of video games myself. So I'm not going to bullshit you and say that I've played like most of the games I actually talk about in this video. But I really do love talking about games. I'm sure I'm not the only one that used to just endlessly scroll like what culture or Dorkly articles on all this stuff. So, you know, if I get like fine details tells wrong about the game that's just because I haven't actually played it but I would really like to at some point but yeah uh just just thought I'd let you know full disclosure so I thought I might start off with my favorite one that I found in Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door there is an incredibly morbid detail found in the hub world rogue port that is somehow even worse than the literal noose in the center of the town where inside one of the buildings you can essentially walk into a crime scene with the chalk outline of a dead toad complete with his blood all over the floor a murder that would be covered up in the US version to avoid a higher age rating because why wouldn't it be it's also worth mentioning that while not violence related they also censored mario raising his arm when talking to certain npcs I don't think I need to explain to you why. Some of the mini games in the Japanese version of Mario Party 2 feature characters packing heat, which just like our good friends over at 4Kids were changed to cork pop guns, which honestly wasn't like a huge change, so I'm kind of surprised they even left it in there. Of course, one of the few games that brought about the rating system in the first place, the original Mortal Kombat, has had a very, very long history of censorship, with the fun police stepping in about as early as the original game when it was ported from arcade to home consoles, with fatalities being heavily altered, and of course, the blood being removed in the SNES version, which changed it to grey to make it more like sweat instead, while Sega's Genesis and Game Gear versions kept the blood in the game but hid them behind a cheat code, which of course made them the more popular choice of the two. This became like such a huge thing that Sega actually used it as a point of marketing in some of their ads. And Mortal Kombat with secret codes for full arcade finishing moves. It's the only system that could take the punishment. Would you believe me if I told you that Shadow the Hedgehog was actually actually supposed to be even edgier before the game came out. I'm sure most of you are aware of the game trying to appeal to a slightly older audience through the inclusion of like firearms and swearing in it. Where's that? Damn, fourth chaos emerald. But during the game's development, the team behind it were aiming for a teen rating until the ESRB introduced the brand new E10+. Plus. So they decided to shift course toward that and ended up having to cut a few things in order to meet those requirements, which meant unfortunately cutting some more of the swear words. Now, since unlike a lot of the other examples in this video, all of these changes were made before the game actually came out, there's no real way for us to know how much exactly was cut. The best I was able to find was pretty much everything already covered in censored gaming's video on Shadow the Hedgehog, where they found the portfolio of one of the employees who worked on the cinematics for the game, uh, Blur Studio, who posted some extended versions of the cutscenes on Vimeo, but everything else I could find from there was just like blurry screenshots and stuff. But even more interestingly, the scene where Maria gets no scope by gun agents was actually supposed to show her getting shot as opposed to just cutting away. And while this doesn't make it to the final game, a remnant of it can be seen in one of the pre-release trailers, where you can just barely see a reflection of her getting shot in Shadow's eyes. I'm also sure it's unsurprising that the very violent Punisher game was heavily censored with all of the incredibly violent execution scenes subject to like a black and white filter and like changed camera angles to sort of lessen the impact of them but doesn't really hide all that much if you ask me. And the same thing goes for the infamously censored Manhunt 2 where in the very few countries where it wasn't just straight up banned, the execution scenes were covered up with every single possible Windows Movie Maker filter that you could apply. In the 3DS game Dragon Ball Fusions, all attacks involving swords were changed into sticks for some reason in some regions like North America and the European versions despite the game's teen rating, but left literal firearms and profanity untouched in the game. 
All right, some people have actually theorized that these were changed more for aesthetic purposes, like to better match the chibi styling of the game, but it's still a very odd decision when, like, as I said, guns are still in the game with no problem at all. The Japanese version of Mega Man Legends just let you kick the shit out of any animal in any of the maps in the game. I'm sorry, I know it's horrible, but it's so funny. In fact, in that original version, there's a segment where you actually are supposed to kick a dog in order to progress. Anyway, moving on from child murder and animal cruelty, let's talk about PUBG, which was actually reworked into a pretty different game in China. While the original version of the game was playable in China for a bit, with just the usual changes of, you know, green blood and everything, eventually it was taken down and replaced with a brand new version called Game for Peace, where everyone you kill just kind of kneels down on the floor and waves at you and then nicely hands you whatever they had on them. The worst case of this though was something I'm pretty sure I covered a long time ago in my video about rating systems systems with how strict Germany is with their video game censorship laws, as they used to have this rule on effect that was sort of along the lines of like prohibiting a depiction of violence against any kind of human or humanoid objects in games, which caused the most common workaround to be just either changing blood from red to green, or my personal favorite, where they would change every human enemy into robots, uh, like in Command and Conquer Generals, where every single one of the character icons had different art made just for the German version. Whereas in Team Fortress Classic, every single class was swapped out with a model of a robot. Team Fortress 2 just kind of did the bare minimum where every single class was completely identical to every other version of the game, but whenever they get shot, sparks would fly out instead of blood. Though they did go as far as to make their own versions of some of the character trailers and like edited out all of the violence and gore and replaced it with like springs and oil. Several games in the Contra series were reworked into Probotector in power releases of the game to better fit in with the fact that every character was changed into being a robot. And this went on for like three or four whole releases, I think. The best one though is in the original Half-Life, where not only were every single one of the soldier enemies changed into being robots, but all of the NPCs that would usually be killable in any other version of the game, when attacked, just kind of sit down and look disappointed at you. The game Bionic Commando, which originally was so blatantly about killing Nazis that the original Japanese title was literally Hitler's Resurrection was of course changed in the US release to remove all references to Nazi iconography with more generic symbols and changed the main antagonist to a guy called Master D but he still looks exactly like Hitler though, so. The Wolfenstein series, of course, has been heavily censored in Germany, with the most recent and arguably funniest example being in the latest game in the series, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, where one cutscene in the game features an appearance from Hitler. And so in the German version, they censored it by just shaving his mustache off and hoping that no one would recognize him. Now let's talk about religion, which is a sentence I hope I never say again in my whole life. Nintendo of America back in the 80s had their own set of guidelines for what was allowed to be available on their consoles, and one of those was a very strong stance against any kind of depiction of religious imagery, meaning several popular titles had to be changed when they were brought over from Japan. DuckTales had to change all of the crosses on coffins to RIP text, Mega Man had to rename the Yellow Devil boss to Rock Monster, The Legend of Zelda had a Bible item that was replaced with the more generic Book of Magic, but still actually keeps the cross on it I'm pretty sure, Final Fantasy changed churches to clinics, and most interestingly even the kill or death spell had to be changed to rub. But then one of the crosses stayed intact in Castlevania 3, so it wasn't like always consistent. These guidelines would become gradually less strict over the years, but they would still come into effect in future consoles like the SNES, with games like Secret of Mana, which had to change the Hellhound enemy to Heckhound. In the original Mario Party, sometimes when you would lose, either Luigi or Wario would invoke the name of the Lord. Oh my god! Oh my god! which was changed to the arguably just as funny wallowing in pain from Luigi. <laughs> or what would become one of Wario's most iconic lines. Oh, I missed. In Ocarina of Time, the original Fire Temple theme actually contained religious chanting from a real life Islamic prayer because of them making use of like some kind of stock sound library when they were making the soundtrack for the game. which they only realized after the game came out, and so had to make changes to it in future printings of the game and even re-releases later down the line, like the 3DS version. 
I kind of wanted to do a quick segment going over like alcohol and drug censorship in games, even though most of them are pretty much exactly the same thing, but there were a couple standout ones I did want to mention. In Super Mario Kart, characters like Bowser and Peach celebrate their victory on the podium by chucking alcohol, which was made considerably less funny in Western releases with them just holding or throwing it. In Pokemon Red and Blue, there's an old man who blocks your path to the Viridian Forest who claims it's because he hasn't had his coffee yet, but in the original version, he's actually passed out drunk on the floor. Final Fantasy Legend 2 had an entire opium smuggling subplot that they had to change into being about stolen bananas. And in the original Punch-Out on Arcades, there was an opponent called Vodka Drunkinski, who was changed into Soda Popinski when it was brought to home consoles, which has actually stayed his name in all future sequels to the game. And last but not least, I thought we should talk about... Sex. I'm gonna have to be really careful with what I show here. In South Park, the Stick of Truth, around seven whole scenes of the game were just straight up removed in regions like Russia, Europe, and Australia, and just replaced with these splash screens describing what happened instead, which was actually voluntarily done by Ubisoft themselves so they didn't have to deal with the ratings boards. And honestly, can you blame them? I'm sure the GTA series has been censored to absolute hell in every single release in the usual expected areas, but the most interesting one I found was in GTA Vice City, where all of the explicit photos of naked women in one of your mansions were changed to stock photos of cats in the Japanese version, which I'm sure is a very subtle innuendo of some kind. Watch Dogs 2 contains areas where NPCs just show up completely naked, which also meant that every other pedestrian in the game also had fully rendered junk, which someone accidentally discovered when they found an NPC with a fully modeled vagina clipping through her pants. And after they shared this image online and news broke out about it, it was actually patched out of the game in a following update. Whether they removed all of the nude people or just just like those certain NPCs, I'm not sure, but God damn it, I wish I had not seen that. <laughs> two lines of dialogue from Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi had to be cut out of the sequels for being too vulgar. Those being Jay showing off his Australian slang, Still play stupid with me, wanker! Which was unbelievably lazily cut off in Budokai Tenkaichi 2, where I guess they just hope no one would notice he doesn't finish his sentence. Still play stupid with me! And there's also an exchange between Zangya and Android 18, where she calls her something, uh, not very nice. You man's kinda cute. Skank. In Sonic Adventure's Casinopolis stage, there's a sign in the Japanese version of a large cowgirl that would also moan whenever you ran into it for some reason. <laughs> But of course, it was replaced with a more boring sign in other versions of the game. In Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, you can find the book Sinnoh Folk Stories in the Kanalave City Library, which states that Pokemon and humans used to eat together at the same table. Whereas the Japanese version goes even further and states that humans used to marry Pokemon. Why? <laughs> There's a running theme with these stories about how Pokemon and humans kind of evolved from the same ancestors and how back in the day you couldn't even tell the difference between the two of them, which I guess kind of absolves some of the weirdness, but like still dude, I don't want to hear about that shit, okay? But hey, I'm sure at least Vaporeon fans will be pretty happy about it. In Fire Emblem Awakening's Summer Scramble fan service DLC, where you get to see a couple of the characters in swimsuits, the character Thaja's image of her getting changed apparently pushed things too far and so had to be covered up with a towel in the North American release. What makes this one even worse though is that all of the choices of the characters in the DLC were actually taken from a popularity poll that was held prior. So to have one of those four be completely covered up I imagine probably would have been pretty annoying. Even Animal Crossing had two characters that were changed in the international release. Grace the Giraffe and Roland the Camel who were both characters in the original version that were male but spoke with like a feminine nature. Who were both given more feminine names in the English release just in case anyone got confused I guess. This one is more localization than sense Shit, but I still thought it might be worth bringing up anyway. Super Mario RPG even had to remove Bowser doing the up yours victory pose. In Pokemon Stadium, Nido Queen's original entrance animation had her grabbing her boobs for some reason, which was changed to a pretty similar one where she just shakes her whole chest, which I guess kind of gets the same message across but without being as traumatizing. In Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, again for the third time, the character of Vivian was originally intended to be a transgender female that gets bullied for it by her sisters, but she was changed to just being female female on the North American release where she gets bullied for being ugly instead. The same goes for Birdo and Mario as well actually. As it says in the original Japanese manual for Doki Doki Panic, the game that would be eventually reworked into Super Mario Bros 2 for the North American release, that she would prefer to be referred to as a girl. And of course, just to wrap up, there is the endless cycle of Japanese games having extremely risque or lewd costumes having to be covered up in all localized versions of it. Seriously, this will never end. The Final Fantasy series has had to alter designs of female enemies 
interesting characters throughout the series' history, as early as Medusa and Earth Medusa sprites in the original game, and this is something that has continued throughout the series for several years. Cruising USA on the Nintendo 64 had no issues with a girl on a bikini starting the races, but made the girl on the victory screen put a top on. Due to bravely defaults chibi art style and younger age of the characters, the localization team took to aging up pretty much all of the cast about three years to all be at least 18 years old, and then changed some of the more revealing outfits anyway, which continued into the sequels to the game. Even Super Smash Bros had to alter some of the spirit images when using official artwork to cover up female characters. Sometimes the opposite can happen though, like when the Japanese ratings board forced Smash 4 to slightly lengthen Palutena's skirt, just in that version. The same thing goes for the Wonder Pink trophy, where she has an entirely different pose in the Japanese release uh, to make sure her underwear wouldn't be visible. I know, in Japan. I'm sure you'll remember the worst case of censorship ever though, when they patched out one of Minecraft Steve's victory animations in Ultimate, just because he was holding a very phallic piece of meat in front of his pants that made it look like his dick, because Nintendo were cowards. And I'm pretty sure that's about everything I am legally allowed to show you on YouTube. As always, I'm sure there were a million other ones I didn't get to, but he here were just a collection of a few of them that I thought were interesting. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Hopefully, if I still have a channel by then.